Right, I've just come through there. It wasn't too bad, actually. I mean, you can go down through a valley there. It takes you down to the bottom where you don't have to do the steps. I can see some people coming down the steps. And over there, God, it looks like a war zone. I didn't recognise that hill straight away. It's where you climb up after you cross the road. I thought, God, I don't recognise it hardly. Yeah, I hardly recognise that, that hill there. That's where you have to, I think that's what it is. Yeah, because that's the main road, yeah. It is shell. There's some, and you can't see it, but skirting this bit of bush here, there's a steps going down. And then they go down over there and up the other side. And we've just done Piney Slides Farm. And, um, I just feel my lungs are just beginning to relax now. It's the first time I felt comfortable. Just the first time. Um, my something in my back was aching for or well, soon not long after I started climbing out with Cheddar. It's only just gone. When I was, when I walked across that field, it was I was relaxing. The hell, big hell is gone. It does me good to do a hill though because it does stir up. If you have got a lot of debris and muck through not being able to get out, it stirs it up. And I do feel much better now. I can and I did have to have two puffs on my new inhaler. Which I had to because I just felt like my alveoli were tightening up. It was really uncomfortable, so I had to and, you know, I've been using it a lot the last couple of weeks, but we've had all this grey stuff. And, uh, I mean, I've always had quite good lungs in a way. I know I smoked in the past as well, but when I was a swimmer, and I used to do front crawl, I could swim a hundred lengths without stopping, things like that. I had really good lungs. Now here... This has been videoed and photoed many times. This is either like a little shepherd's hut or even an old lime kiln or both. The lime kilns around here are, are frequent on the Mendip Hills. It's uh, falling down a bit, I think. I'd have to look at the old videos and photos of it. Yeah. The video might be a bit shaky. I'm juggling two cameras. Yeah, all around the Mendips you'll find old structures. I would say this is a lime kiln, and that was once the hole where the for the kiln would have been fitted there. I'm sure it's been knocked down a bit. It doesn't look so upright. I'm not sure. I'd have to look. Oh, is that gone already? <sighs> Just see if I can take one more photo. It needs to charge in. Let's have a look. Just see if I can do this one. Well, I'll get the battery charger out. And there's one. Yeah, there's one over there. Right over there, we've got the steps and people are coming down. They're doing the gorge walk and over there you've got steps and people are climbing down. Quite slippery this time of year to do that. And then they go up over there and back to the top of the gorge. Okay, we're going down um, through Black Rock to start with. My camera's already run out, even though it's not been doing video, it needs charging already. But um, it's connecting up very well with my new charger, a Duracell one, which I will connect up in a minute.
Yeah, all these humps and bumps, this is all to do with surface mining and whatever they did when they mined it, they needed the kilns. Is it calisite? I don't know, something anyway. I keep forgetting what it's called, the stuff. Oh, excuse me. Just getting up a bit of... A bit of colic. So that's what I mean, you get all these humps and bumps. And then you'll get indentations as well where there was a structure. Once here, there was a... I'm sure it was more built up as well in the past. But this was something dug out in, uh, for the miners, for the shepherds. Don't forget, the, the spirits and the ghosts of the past walked here. They walked here once upon a time. Like I'm walking past these stones that might have been put there by some person once. <sighs> these mounds are sometimes got stones, they get covered up the stones and earth grows over them. <sighs> so the goats are over there. There's the gorgeous. This will change colour. It looks brown and grey and bleak at the moment. But very soon, this is the first day of spring. We haven't had a lot of sunshine, to be quite honest. This will, it is looking a little bit sad, I must admit. I've been here in spring before now and it hasn't looked quite so sad. I know it's a grey day. I'm gonna turn off for a little while. Got to find the charger for the camera. I've got spare batteries for this one. Over and out. Right then. So I've walked on the other side of the gorge. I'll be going through a gate in a minute and then I'll be going down. I always like to call it Granny Granny Lane. There's something about that old lane that I go down that reminds me of being way back in the past. You know, two, three hundred years ago. That would have been there. Imagine all the people that have walked up there. If you could capture them. I mean, I've been up there loads of times. My spirit has been up and down there. Over the last... Um, at least the last 15 years I've been exploring this place. Since I retired, really, and I came to Weston, um, I've been um, wondering about finding all the different tracks, exploring everywhere, all over there. I, I've, just, I've been everywhere, really. Because that's Velvet Bottom, going all the way up that way, so I've done all that. I've been all the way up there. So this little track, I'm not, not yet, it's not for another couple of minutes. Go through this gate. This is all new with these new fencing and gates. Um, they're obviously allowing humans to come in. Putting little signs on, reminding people to shut the gate. Longfield's of course not far away. But I won't be going there today. Before now, I have gone down, straight down, through the bushes, down into the Black Rock area. I have done all that as well. And of course, then you've got Longwood, which is now redundant to people because of the ash die back, and they've had to prune it all back. The paths have been hidden. They show little pathways. There are some areas you can probably still, I know you can still get to, but you can't really roam through it. Um, I was thinking in the summer I might just pop down to the stream um, at, at one time. But that's all like velvet bottom and that. In a minute, going up, up through somewhere, up through there and all around, you know. I, I walk that, go to the... 
right over there to the minories, to the, the Roman and Victorian areas where they did it all. That's a velvet bottom leading up round through there, see? Called velvet bottom because of the coal slag that's lying about from the smelting and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I've walked along here many a time, I have, over the last 15 years. Now, of course, before that, I was a, a, obviously a mum with young children. I was um, a full-time nurse working, and I'd been a teacher as well. Um, I never had time to come out and leisurely do this. But as soon as I retired, and I was able to be retired, first thing I did is got myself a little camper van, the VW first one. I wanted to get out and explore. So I went all over the country. And family tree, I've been doing for a number of years, having the vehicle enabled me to go and find the places where the known ancestors lived, like the Oaks, the Brooks, the Hassles, and other names, Stuttvilles. I am glad I done that. I had my other, my Alberta. I didn't really want to part with her, but she was nearly 30 years old. Her engine was as strong as ever, but the bits were falling off. Exhaust, electrics, rust. Yeah, she was uh, fading. So she failed the MOT. It would cost a thousand pounds minimum to put her right, but she was starting to rust out. Following a really heavy snow we had in 2018, I don't think it helped. Plus she was vandalised, someone had pulled all her rubber seals just before winter, so she started to take in water. Um, these things happened to my van by very nasty people really. Uh, jealous people. Um, I, I had to confront some really awful things really and they attacked my van. So in the end, I lost my van. And these people laughed. Sonny, sometimes I've been watching this drama called Coma, and there's a nasty young man in that who is accusing just an ordinary bloke going about his business. He, because this old man, well, he wasn't an old man, but tried to intervene when the group of kids were beating up and rolling about an old man in the road, in the street, in front of everybody. He tried to, he told them to stop doing it. In the end, he walked away and he felt terrible. They told him to just fuck off and all that. But this particular young man made a note of him and found out where he lived and started to attack his car, all sorts of things. In the end, he confronted him outside. The young man was calling him a paedophile, lots of horrible things. And it got to a stage where it was gonna be a punch up. This bloke, normally a quiet man, not normally aggressive or anything, but was annoyed with this young man. And he just punched him once. It was one punch, right in the head. The boy fell over and cracked his head on the pavement. And he went into, the, the drama's called coma. Now this man panicked. Instead of a, Letting it all come out properly with the police. <sighs> because the young boy had a criminal father, a violent criminal father, in a gang, in, in a gang who thought it was made out. 
he did try to resuscitate the boy, the one that hit him. He did try to, and the, and the ambulance came. He was seen as being a hero for, tr for saving the boy's life. The boy went into a coma for a while. Now this criminal father put his sort of adopted the bloke that had saved his son, not knowing that this man had punched him in the head. Cut a short story. Basically, they, the man and his wife lived in fear, really, of this boy's father and the boy. And there was an old neighbour who said he saw what happened, but he, he didn't tell the police. Anyway, there was a lot more to it than this. Basically, well, it's the last episode tonight, actually, so we will find out what happens. When the boy came round, because the father wanted the hero man who rescued his son to meet his son. Because he wanted to find out who'd actually punched him. So the man was petrified that the boy would recognise him. He was sat up in bed. Still had lots of tubes in him and that in the hospital. And his father introduced him to the man. Basically, they shook hands. When the father left the room, the boy said, I know it, I knew, I know, I am fully aware of what you did to me, and I own you now. And he started to blackmail him for money, you know, like 50 grand and all that sort of thing. Anyway, there was a policeman on the case digging around in the background. There's a lot to it, really. There's a lot more to it. Like the bloke had his own, had just set up his own CTV camera and it had actually shown him punching the boy. So he quickly disabled that. But the father said he knew somebody who could look at his camera for him. Anyway, and the policewoman was digging around more of the gang that the boy belonged to. Because this man wasn't the first one that this gang had targeted. So now we've got to find out what happens because apparently the father's aware. The boys demanded money. The father uh, had um, his, told his brother to keep an eye on his son because apparently he knows he's naughty. The, the uncle found out that he was demanding money from the man and he told, the boy told the man, his uncle, what really happened. Well, not the whole truth, but... So that changed everything. In the end, we're now waiting to see what happens. They're in a warehouse, he's run, trying to escape. He just handed over some money to this boy. The uncle started to, to chase after the man, who was just petrified. He got his wife to come quickly to get him in, in her car. And because she, 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 he told his wife everything. We're now waiting to see because as, as she was picking him up, she accidentally ran over the uncle. So he's lying either dead or in a coma. And that's where we are, folks. That's a little story on the wall called the coma. Over and out. I'm now at the little old ladies la lane, I call it. I'm going down old ladies lane. There's long sheep field that I go and I've rescued sheep who get their horns caught in the fence and up there loads of times. So I'm now going down. Oh, what I'll do, I'll edit that long bit back there. I'll edit this out and I'll start this as the start of uh, another video. <laughs> I got carried away there, and I don't even know what sparked that off. I don't even know what sparked off. Oh, I know. I was talking about my van being vandalised. That's right. 
and I felt a bit, when I watched that drama last night, the predicament that that man was in, having been targeted by these youths, it made me feel like that when I first moved to where I live and my van was being vandalised and they were drug addicts and all this sort of thing and I had to put up with their abuse. It reminds me of that. So, I'm going to stop here. Over and out.